Hello, everybody. I'm trying to expand my window here. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to my first Facebook Live. Uh, I have never done one of these before, so hopefully you'll uh, extend some grace to me on this realm. But uh, I am. Uh, my name is Corey Close, and I am the uh, head women's basketball coach here at UCLA. And just really been, uh, I love this, I love this organization. Lupus LA has been inspiring to me and I've been involved in some other events with this group. And, uh, and so they, when they asked me to come on this Facebook live to really encourage people and to hopefully give some tips on resiliency and perseverance and, uh, you know, staying motivated through really, really difficult times. And I said an immediate yes, because I have such respect. And I just want to say that, um, you know, all of the things that I might share or say, uh, you know, I, I hope they're helpful, but I want you to know they're with great humility and respect for, you know, people that are maybe caring for uh, or family members and loved ones that are dealing with lupus at different symptom points. Or if you yourself are battling this really difficult disease, um, I just want to say I, res I, I care for you, I respect you, and so um, I, I can only imagine how difficult some days are. And, and, you know, some days just even getting out of bed is just so challenging. And so I, I really um, I want you to know that as I share these tips, I don't share them lightly or I don't share them with a sense of that they're going to solve everything and, and that, so on and so forth. So. That being said, uh, I do want to be an encouragement. That's my hope and my prayer today is that I could be an encouragement and that uh, hopefully I can equip you with some tools and tricks that have been helpful to me in my own personal life with dealing with some adversity and some very recently. And then also, um, you know, just that I, I really want to respond to your questions. Um, and, you know, I'm going to hopefully have some help on this because I've never done this and so I'm hoping I don't miss uh, live questions or things that are coming up. I'm trying to sort of scan to make sure I've got that. But please uh, write in questions and, uh, and help me to uh, make this as helpful to you as possible. Um, you know, uh, I, I'll just sort of work my way backwards, but our, you know, my, I've been the head coach at UCLA for 10 years. I'm going into my 11th season. And my, in my first year, um, I had a tragedy and uh, in my home and I really had PTSD. I didn't even know what that was and it was really difficult. And um, I went into some counseling that, was, that really was helpful. And one of the things that they talked about in my counseling over 15 months was um, that, you know, you really, your mind can only focus on one thing at a time. And they talked about uh, whenever the anxiety would really raise up that I would to take a deep breath and to say like whatever I wanted to replace those thoughts with um, on the breath on the way out. So literally I, when I would start to really get anxiety ridden, I would take 15 deep breaths and I would say, relax, you know, relax. And uh, really just trying to uh, replace my mind uh, with the negative thoughts or the anxious thoughts that I was experiencing with the behavior and feeling I wanted to follow. Um, you know, my friend John Gordon, he was talking to a, a man that had run more double or done more double Ironman triathlons than anyone else. And, you know, one Ironman triathlon, I think is crazy, let alone two back to back days. And an Ironman triathlon is a marathon run, a mile swim and a 50 mile bike ride. And then to do those back-to-back -back days. And my friend John Gordon asked this man who had done more than anyone else, he said, how do you keep going? I mean, you have to want to quit all the time. How do you keep going? And, uh, and he said, all the time I want to quit. All the time I want to stop doing this and stop training for these things and stop dealing with the pain I'm dealing with. And John goes, well, what keeps you going? How do you keep doing what you're doing? And the, the guy said, I have mastered the idea i've mastered the craft of talking to myself rather than listening to myself so what does that mean so if if he doesn't replace if he doesn't start talking to himself he's going to be like why am i doing this i mean those are the i'm so tired this is so hard uh oh my gosh my body hurts and instead he actively 
talks to himself, you know, and he reminds himself of his purpose and he replaces those thoughts that he had, whether, um, you know, with the, with what the thoughts he wanted to have moving forward. And so one of the things I talk to my players about all the time is it happened today in practice. I said to one of my players, are you talking to yourself right now? Or are you listening to yourself? Cause it was a really hard practice and it was difficult and they were battling, but I think it's just so important you know, with so many challenges that most of us are facing these days, um, to try to, it's a skill to master the craft of talking to yourself rather than listening to yourself. Um, let me just make sure I'm not missing any questions. Um, okay. Again, join us with questions. And if you can, uh, if I can answer anything, I want to do that. I'm trying to, uh, make sure I'm here we go. Okay. I think I've got a couple here. I think I'm figuring this out. Um, but it says, uh, Susan says, thank you, coach. How has the pandemic impacted your athletes? And how do you inspire uh, young people, young adults to move through these challenging times? Well, um, you know, it's so interesting that you say that. Last year, um, we had, uh, it was just so difficult. Um, and we were one of the last ones to be able to be uh, brought back to UCLA. And even though there was no other campuses, there were athletes here. And we were shut down in 2020. We were shut down from March 13th all the way until September 21st. And most other universities got to come back in the summer and train, and we didn't have that opportunity. And, you know, I was, uh, when our team came back, um, you know, there was a lot of fear. There was a lot of angst that they weren't able to train and prepare for the season like they normally were. We only had six or seven people. Um, you know, usually we have a team of 15. And, and we just really started like, okay, maybe whatever we, it was interesting over the summer, we said, okay, we can't train together physically. What can we do? And what we figured out is that we can train our minds. So I went to three people that I knew from a mental conditioning standpoint, uh, Trevor Moad and who I, we've most recently lost to liver cancer. So but he's had such an impact. He wrote a book called it takes what it takes. That was really instrumental. And then my friend Joshua Medcalf, who's written several books, but uh, Chop Wood, Carry Water, Win in the Dark, uh, those are really good, good ones that he's written. And he, these are all mental conditioning uh, people, as well as Focus 3 with Tim Kite and Brian Kite. And I went to them and said, okay, we may not be able to uh, tra train physically, but we can train mentally. That's a skill. And so we came up with a 12-week curriculum of how we could train mentally. And I would say that that is the case. Um, you know, what it doesn't, it could be sports or it could be life. It could be business. Um, you can always train your mind and that is a skill just like any other skill. And so that was really, really instrumental. The second thing that we said is once we got back together, what is it that we do have control over together every day? Sometimes we didn't have enough to go five on five and practice. Sometimes we had to just make do and do, watch film and because we didn't have enough healthy players. But you know what we could do every day? Every single person in the building could grow, intentionally grow that day. And every single person in the building could choose joy. Um, joy is very different than happiness. Happiness depends on your happenings, your circumstances. Uh, you know, how are your lupus sy symptoms acting up? How are, what, is, what are your jobs and responsibilities as a caretaker or, or with a family member? And I'll share a little bit more about how I've dealt with that in the last few years. Um, you know, so all of those things come into pass. Um, but you know what? Joy is, comes from within. Joy is not something that is, uh, comes from your circumstances. It's a choice. And so we thought we can choose joy. So we're going to uh, choose intentional growth. We, we are going to grow every day and we're going to catch each other doing it right in that growth. And then secondly, we're going to choose joy and somebody else's day is going to be better because I'm there. And so that's, that's really some of the things that we tried to do throughout the season is, uh, is choose that growth. And the other thing about it is, you know, I hate to break it to you, but you know, I always ask people all the time, tell me about a time in your life that you grew the most. And you know, every single time they say, well, when I had this adversity and then all of a sudden I, I was, you know, experiencing this adversity and then I overcame, I, I conquered a hard thing. And the reality of that is that, um, the real growth in life, the real purpose in life, the real deep contentment, the real connecting times in life usually come 
from overcoming hard things. And, you know, or from choosing joy to me, when you choose joy on a really hard day, that's overcoming a really hard thing. And so um, I would say that that was a real key is that telling us, you know, as, as none of us would choose this, choose this circumstance. None of us would. But in the midst of it, we do understand that some deep, meaningful, purposeful things can come out of it. There can have redeeming value in the midst of our adversity if we choose to, t to choose that perspective. So those are some of the things that we really chose to do throughout last season, throughout the pandemic, and actually are continuing to do in some ways. Um, so thank you for your question, Susan, and uh, keep them coming. So you, cause otherwise you're gonna get tired of my story. So uh, I'll try to not miss them as they come up. I'm trying to make sure that I've gotten them all at this point. Okay. Um, you know, just in terms of some other things, you know, I actually was uh, overseas. I coached the U19 World Cup team this summer, and I was overseas, and uh, my dad um, had been ill for several years. He had cardiovascular dementia, and um, but the last thing I did with my dad before I left to coach the USA basketball team, the national team, is I brought my dad to practice at UCLA and I got to experience that with him and he had the time of his life and our players did such a great job. But when I was over there, um, my dad passed away. And when I, was in, uh, when I was in Spain and Hungary and it was really, really difficult and I was grieving and I was away from my family and, um, and it was just really, it was, a very, it was a very difficult time. And then I came back and a couple of weeks after I was back, my mom was hospitalized with COVID. And so it just was a really, and I, I just kept, sometimes I kept telling myself, it was hard to not, you talk about having to talk to yourself rather than listen to yourself. Part of me was like, oh my gosh, I just don't think I can handle anything else. It's just so hard and it's just so tough. Um, but you know what? I kept saying, you know what? I can do hard things. And I kept remembering other times in my life when I had conquered hard things. And I just kept reminding myself. And I'm a person of faith. And um, one of the things that um, my, in, my, in my faith that I really appreciate is that I always say that God already knows I'm going to forget. He doesn't get mad at me for forgetting. He just asks me to continually remind myself and remember. And so what I tried to start doing is in the midst of feeling overwhelmed, like, oh, my gosh, I just tried to start remembering um, and, and reminding myself of the truths I've known. The other thing that I have started doing the last couple of years is that I have um, every morning I try to write down 10 things that I'm thankful for and 10 truths I want to anchor my life to. There's a lot of lies out there and I know, I know that the lies come swirling in my head all the time. When life gets hard, when things get difficult, um, it's easy to sort of uh, let yourself believe those lies. And uh, one of my friends said, just because you have a negative thought doesn't mean you have to believe it. And, but in order to not believe it, you got to replace that lie with truth. And so that's one of the disciplines that's been really helpful to me is uh, sometimes even just throughout the day when I can feel myself in a negative cycle, I'll just start saying things I'm thankful for out loud. Oh, I'm thankful for the birds. Um, I'm thankful for fresh air. I'm thankful for clean water. I'm thankful for uh, great relationships. I'm thankful for, you know, and I just start saying it out loud because I know that that will replace uh, that will replace some of the lies with truths and i think sowing seeds of gratitude is one of the biggest keys of perseverance and especially through hard things and um you know i think that that's just a, a really difficult thing i'm not going to say that it, it isn't but it's it is really hard um today actually at practice i um it's interesting i i shared a clip um of lewis howes and he was sharing about how you know, we've all had an experience, right? When there's been a friend of ours that's feeling really low, feeling insecure, feeling really down. And, you know, you just were, as a friend, you were intentional just to remind them of their giftedness, remind them of their meaning in life, encourage what they've done, uh, affirm them for who they are, uh, just speak truth uh, to how they've made a difference in your own life as a friend. And all of a sudden, their whole countenance changes and their encouragement um, rises. And they, instead of feeling totally insecure, they're feeling buoyed. And um, they're feeling in, um, just, just like they can conquer so many things. It's amazing how with an intentional 
uh, encouragement, affirmation, truth, uh, how much you can change uh, somebody else's mood and somebody else's perspective. And then what Lewis Howe said, why don't we do that with ourselves? Why don't you give license to yourself to talk to yourself that way when you're feeling low, when you're feeling insecure, when you're um, having fear creep in or doubt creep in? Why wouldn't you remind yourself of your giftedness, remind yourself of your uh, worthiness, worthiness, your growth, uh, all the different things that come that way? And, and uh, I think that's so key. You know, I was telling our team, like, you guys never talk to each other the way that sometimes you talk to yourself. And, you know, you never say, you know, darn it, Gina, you got to make that next shot. What's wrong with you? You know, you would never say that to a teammate because you know it wouldn't be helpful. It wouldn't be good for the team. It's not being a good teammate. But then why do you allow yourself to talk that way to, to your own heart and to your own mind? And so I really think that's a, you know, give yourself license to treat yourself with the same love, care, extension, humility that you treat your most treasured friends. And a lot of times a big difference can be made in that. Um, <clears throat> Hi, Shay, watching from Washington, thank you, or from Virginia, excuse me, thank you so much. Uh, would love to uh, hear any questions that you have. Um, I think it says, uh, question, do you have any suggestions for how someone can mentally train or work on their mindset when they're physically restricted? Um, yes, I do actually, sorry, I'm, I'm going back and forth with this, uh, with this image here. So, um, I think that, uh, you know, a couple of different things with that. If you're limited physically, uh, training mentally, uh, like, um, one of the things is that I heard one time was you either live out of discipline or default and discipline is like, okay, this is what I have in front of me. These are the choices and behaviors that I'm going to work on and I'm going to live out of. And if you don't make, set your mind every day, you will live out of default, which is like the world's just happening to me. It's sort of like a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. A fixed mindset makes you feel like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm physically limited. I have all these challenges. I guess the world's just going to happen to me. Well, a growth mindset says, yes, uh, maybe I'm not, I don't like how lupus is affecting me. I can't do some of the things that other people can do. Um, but I still have opportunities to learn and grow and I'm going to turn every single circumstance, every single feeling, every single opportunity, uh, every single circumstance is an opportunity to learn and grow. So mentally, mental conditioning is one of those things. Um, I think that um, for some practical things, I really would um, start with some of those books that I mentioned. It takes what it takes, uh, chop wood, carry water, win in the dark. Um, uh, you know, a really good one is uh, The Inner Game of Tennis. That's probably the first mental conditioning book I ever read. And it's an older book, but it is so good. And it's interesting, a story from that book is, I think it was Pete Sampras, but don't quote me on that. But he was in a slump, and he's one of the best tennis players of all time. And he goes to this guy, he goes, hey, this guy's a really good sports psychologist. You should go to him. And he, I think he paid a whole lot of money, and he shows up, and the guy goes, okay, uh, we're just going to hit back here, and we're going to, um, every time the ball hits the ground, I want you to say bounce. Every time you hit the ball, I want you to say hit. And so here, te here Pete Sampras is, one of the best players in the world. And um, the guy's like, just say bounce, bounce, hit, bounce, bounce, hit. And I just want you to say that over and over. Like, well, what else? I mean, I can do that, but what else am I supposed to do? I need to get out of this slump. He goes, just do that. And we first started doing, he's like, this is so dumb. I'm paying this guy all this money. And I'm just saying bounce, bounce, hit. Like, who is he? I mean, and what am I doing? And, um, and why, you know, doesn't he know I'm in a slump? Like, I don't have a lot of time to mess around here. Like, I came to him to fix this. And, but he still, he kept doing it because he didn't have any other choice. So he just started saying bounce, bounce, hit, bounce, bounce, hit. And before he knew it, his stroke had smoothed out. He was hitting more winners. He was going back to the rhythm that he had before. And, you know, the whole point was something I referred to earlier is that, you know, you have to talk to yourself rather than listen to yourself. And he was just taking his um, mind off of all the distractions. Uh, another phrase I use with our team is that performance equals potential minus interferences. And, um, you know, so much of the time we let our interferences 
uh, hold us back from things that we really actually can do if we just didn't listen to all the noise. So um, I'm not saying it's easy um, because if you're limited physically, but I think um, really writing things down. Another thing that someone told me one time is that we're all, we are all writing our own story. And even though every story has different ups and downs into it, how do you want this chapter to read? And so this day, maybe that's the next five minutes, but maybe you're really limited phys phys uh, physically, but you really want to grow mentally. I think write out what that would look like for the day. Um, for me, um, I like to memorize. Um, I'm actually with a uh, with a former player. I'm memorizing a Bible verse a week. I'm just trying to memorize truth for me, the, the truth that I've chosen for my life. And, you know, I'm trying to make steps to really love people really well. Like maybe I, I try to write a note of encouragement or a note of thanks every single day. Well, that doesn't, t being physically, that's changing my heart. Um, our whole team wrote thank you notes yesterday. And I said, yes, this is about thanking these people. And it's about making them feel appreciated. But you know what it's also about? It's about sowing seeds of gratitude in your own heart because people that are full of gratitude are more contented and uh, have more purposeful lives. So I think it's really just uh, focusing on things that of growth and joy. How can you, in the midst of your circumstance, um, you know, make a, what's the next right behavioral step towards growth and joy? So that would be a couple of things that I would, uh, what I would say. Let's see if I'm going to be, um, all right. Um, oh, this is good. Let's see here. Um, what are some of the most helpful affirmations you've used in your own life? Well, it's interesting. I am, uh, I'm actually at night. Sometimes I go to sleep really easily. Um, but at night in the middle of the night, if I wake up, um, like it happened last night and I had to take my dog out and in the middle of the night and I have a really hard time going back to sleep. And so I have, um, downloaded an app called soul time. Um, S O U L time. And I just press play and it says, you know, dealing with anxiousness in the middle of the night. And it starts playing these affirmations. Um, that one has a spiritual component to it because that's a part of my heart and life. Um, but there's also, um, uh, I think it's mind space. Um, our, our players do that. We actually do four minutes of visualization every single day before practice. We, we haven't finished all of their visualization films yet, so we haven't totally started that. But in the next month, we will do that for the next four or five months. We will do that every single day. And if, you, if we, let's say you don't have an updated visualization film for basketball, um, then you go on to uh, Mindspace and I think that's right, if I, but there's an app and they get to listen to sort of that meditation of setting your mind. I'm a really big believer that if you don't set, uh, I think someone had written on the, in the comments that sometimes you just feel like you're, I'm feeling, I, I'm living, I don't feel like I'm living daily. I just feel like life is going by and I can only imagine being in your shoes. Uh, so I don't take this lightly, but I think if you don't set your mind every single day, it will set it for you. And that's the whole discipline versus default because um, unfortunately, I think that we have to, it, it's not mind maybe, it's not mind hope, it's mind set. If you want a really good perspective in the midst of very difficult circumstances, oh, one of my colleagues just said it's headspace. That's the app, headspace that we use. Um, but I think if you don't set your mind, then it will be set for you. And usually it, it isn't in a good direction. And so I try to use either some of these disciplines of gratitude or um, writing a note of encouragement to somebody else. I believe we have to encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, as long as the circumstances are needed. Um, so I try to encourage people every single day and, and bring affirmation to other people's lives. Um, and I do this imperfectly. Some days I miss, um, but this is what I try to do. But I try, I'm trying to set my mind and my heart. I do this really silly thing on social media. Um, and I, I the, it's called car rides with Corey and I just sort of share about what I'm thinking about and what I'm learning and, and leadership and life stuff that, and I just talk on my way to work, which is about, it's, it's only less than two minutes that I'm usually doing these things, but it's so funny. Uh, people say, I'm really glad they've been helpful, helpful to some people that makes me feel good, but I'm not really doing it for other people. I'm really doing it to speak out loud and to set my mind and to remind my own heart. And so I think one of the biggest things, if you're um, 
just feel like life is passing you by and you're not really living in it, uh, try to set your mind every morning um, so that it doesn't set, uh, set it for you into default mode. So that's what I would say. All right, let me look at a couple of these other questions here. Um, <clears throat> How to move through a moment that feels very defeating. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think, you know, uh, simple, um, you know, I think I re- try to remind myself who I am. Like, you know, in your best moments, how do you define yourself? In your best days of identity, where do you get your identity from? And, um, and I sure don't think this is easy. Um, you know, for me, like, uh, I am unconditionally loved. Um, you know, my, the mercies are new for me every morning. Um, you know, that I, um, I just, I mean, I fill I fill my mind literally with the affirmations that, you know, I'm, I mean, it's the Saturday night live skit, right? It's you're good enough. You're strong enough. You're smart enough. And by golly, people like you, um, you know, we were, we were actually, our players were sort of joking about it. They were imitating that scene from the help, uh, in uh, that were that were the, nanny in that movie was saying that to that little girl and um it's and you know it melts my heart every time i see that scene because i think we all need that and it goes back to saying i think if i would if i were starting over um i would start start with okay what are 10 things um that i know to be true either about myself or in my best days and i would start just saying them out loud and then i would tell stories about them you know our minds sometimes don't know the difference between narrative and truth and so i would just be re- telling the narrative of what i want to either become or what has already proven to happen and so you know we just i just think sometimes the fixed mindset takes over and it's really hard from that, from that point on um let's see here I'm looking at these. Sorry, bear with me. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to try and do this. Yeah. Okay. How do you make new practices such as exercise and gratitude into long lasting habits? Uh, well, I'm trying to do that myself with exercise right now, and uh, and I'm trying to drink less red wine. Um, so those are things, and it's hard. You know, once you get out of bad, out of good habits, it's really hard to start them back up again. And it used to be I learned that it was 21 days to break an old habit and to start a new one, but actually, it's actually a little longer than that. I'm reading the science has taught us now, um, but I think that um, trying not to think about oh I gotta just create this new habit. Um, I think it's what's the next right step today in the book. It takes what it takes. He talks about, don't try to be positive all the time. Don't try to be rah, rah, uh, get to neutral and getting to neutral means your behavioral based thinking and just your pause, gain clarity and ask yourself, what is my next right step? I always ask our players all the time, ask yourself, what does the team need from me right now? And I think, what does your family need from you right now? What does my mind and heart need from my next right step? And it can be that simple. Um, You know, people would say all the time, well, just one day at a time. Well, sometimes I think it's one moment at a time (laughs) and trying to just win the next moment and trying to fight for your own perspective. When we're doing really hard conditioning drills in our practices, one of my uh, great coaches says always, fight for your form, fight for your form. And I always think about fight for your perspective, fight for your mindset. It's worth fighting for. But I do think that um, writing it down, having accountability people saying, hey, you know, this is a this is something a change I'm trying to make in my life. I actually went out on a limb and told our strength and conditioning coach that I want to lose 20 pounds by Christmas. And uh, and so when I don't show up or when he's eating next to me at training table, I know that I have allowed him to then be a truth teller in my life and to say, "Ah, Corey, that's not really helping you or leading to where, where you need to go. And so um, I think it's writing it down, sharing it with someone else and not making it a big, long plan. But yeah, you start with that, but then you make it into little one day, one moment, one hour. And, you know, one of the real challenges, I think, with these things is that like I'll use me as an example. Let's say I'm trying to lose this weight and I say, okay, this is my nutrition plan. This is what I'm going to do. These are the lifestyle choices I want to make. And then I screw up and I have like 
two chocolate chip cookies one day. And, uh, and then I say, oh my gosh, I, well, forget it. I might, I mean, I already broke the, I broke the commitment. So I might as well have 21 chocolate chip cookies, you know, like, and sometimes you just want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak. And, and I think it's no, okay. I, I made a poor choice. Uh, I got to get some clarity and what's my next right step and getting to neutral, I think is the first thing with that. Um, okay. Um, I got a couple more minutes and then see do you think it's important to do you think it's important to talk to yourself out loud or just in your mind when you're talking to yourself i think you have to depend on what's effective um, i found that it's quicker if you're able to to t talk out loud um, i'm add so i'm like all over the map so i have great intentions when i'm speaking silently but it usually doesn't work because my mind wanders and i'm all over the map and pretty soon i haven't been able to do anything um, so I think if you're able to, um, you know, sometimes like actually the soul time meditations or affirmations that um, I play at night, you know, they, they talk about, I happen to be single, so it's no big deal for me. But they say, you know, if you're, um, do it silently on your breath. So when you on your breathe out, then say it in your mind, but do it rhythmically so to have the most impact. So I realize that sometimes you're maybe not able to, but I do think uh, it's probably more, consistent to be able to say things out loud so like when we're shooting free throws i can tell if one of our players misses a couple free throws um now all of a sudden her she's like why can't i make these oh my gosh and i can see when she starts to listen to herself rather than talk to herself and i go back to that inner game of tennis i said okay tennis go say your routine out loud bounce 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 or you're getting out of bed and you just don't feel like it and you're sad and you know you have adversity like i'm gonna go make 10 good steps to the kitchen and have a cup of coffee or whatever it is. I just think it's what's your next right step. And I do think talking out loud is a little bit more effective. All right. I have time just for a couple more, uh, set my mind. I'm going to try this. I'm thankful that it's helpful to you. Um, it's humbling to know that something I could say could help someone else. Cause I feel like everyone on this call is probably doing more than I, I can ever imagine. Um, let's see here says i have a really rare autoimmune disease oh thank you for your inspiration i can only imagine how hard that is and thank you for just taking the time to tune in uh adversity is really hard and i think that the only way i've found to really redeem the really hard things is to let it teach my heart and it doesn't mean i like it doesn't mean i enjoy it doesn't mean life is fair but it's the only way I've been able to redeem really hard things into really good redeeming things um, is either to take the lessons that I've learned and give them away to someone else um, or just to say, hey, what does this need to teach my heart? And it doesn't make it less painful, but it makes it more purposeful. So hopefully there's been a little bit of encouragement on that. Uh, pause, gain clarity. Uh, what is my next right step? I hope that is helpful. Thank you for even tuning into that. So. Um, I think those are all the questions. Um, I'm just scanning through one more time. <clears throat> well, I just want to say that, uh, you know, I sure don't have it all together. And, uh, and sometimes I need, uh, like I said, I need to do this. Follow me on uh, any social media or on Facebook. Um, I try to do these, but uh, Coach Corey Close. And uh, I'd love to just continue to, care for you and encourage you any way I can. Um, but, uh, you know, I just, I've been through a lot this last year. My mother cared for my father for about four years. Um, there was, she was his full-time caregiver and it was just really, really difficult. And then to see my father's decline and, um, and just what, what that was like and just how hard it, everything in life became for him. And so I just have great compassion uh, for the battle of the uh, people that are battling lupus and for the people in their lives that are trying to come alongside them and care for and with them. So uh, just thank you for letting me be in your world. And thank you for letting me have just a little bit of uh, hopefully time to hopefully encourage you. And uh, hopefully I can continue to do so. But just thank you for letting me enter in. And, uh, you know, my thoughts and prayers of admiration and respect are with you. And uh, thanks for letting me be uh, a part of your day today. Bye-bye now.